Hello YouTube, it is Champion DJK coming at you again with another weekly episode and as usual I've got some pretty cool stuff to share with you. I actually found some stuff in stores which is pretty awesome. I've actually been finding stuff occasionally uh, lately which is which is kind of cool. It's cool. Um, but uh, first I'm going to show you this. I picked up a super treasure hunt loose at my last monthly meet. Just snagged this Camaro. The price was right, and I just grabbed it. So I got that. I got the regular. You guys have probably all seen this before, but whatever. I picked it up. I didn't have this Super, and the guy had it, like, turbo cheap. And I'm like, well, I'll scoop it. Why not? Um, and then I got a treat for you. We're going to look at some Kyosho. I've got four of them that I had purchased possibly about a month or two ago. I can't even remember when I got them. I just haven't shown them yet. I haven't really been able to fit them in, but we're going to look at them. This is a uh, Alfa Romeo Stradale. Uh, I got a Ferrari uh, Dino 308 GT4. Pretty cool. So we're going to open up these, of course. And then I've got a BMW M1. This I am really stoked about, actually. I've always loved the design of this car. I always thought it looked really neat. So we're going to check that out. And then a Lancia, Lancia Fulvia Coupe. Whatever that is. This little guy. We're going to check that out. That's going to be cool, too. All right. So I got some Kyosho for you. That's pretty awesome. I, Kyosho is a brand I used to really heavily collect. Uh, try to get as many as possible that I could. And then I've kind of taken a break from it for a while. Uh, but then Diecast Talk got a bunch in and was selling them. And I was able to pick up a few pieces. I was kind of late to the game. Which is kind of good maybe. Because I would have spent the fortune otherwise. But uh, I was able to get those. Uh, then my buddy Jay actually sent me. Well I bought the latest Boulevard set from him. So he found, I don't know, if, I don't actually know, he didn't even find them. He bought them by the case from somebody. Anyway, they were kind of pricey, but not too bad. I mean, to not have to worry about finding them, um, really nice to get them. But we've got the latest Boulevard release, starting with number 91, the Super Silhouette. Liberty Walk, that's pretty cool. We've got that. We've got the MBK Van. Pretty nifty there. And of course, we're going to open all these. Uh, the Porsche 718 Cayman. This is the star of the show for me. This is Porsche. Uh, we've got the uh, Nissan Skyline RS in black. And the 66 Chevy Corvair Yenko Stinger. This thing's pretty cool, too. So, picked up that as well. Or, well, we got the whole set. So, this is the whole set. Uh, we're going to open up that. That is pretty nifty. And then, speaking of Hot Wheels Premiums, I found, actually, someone stashed this. And I found it in the Nerf Guns. Man, this thing is heavy. It's this truck, I think, is just, it's an all, I think it's all metal based, both like the trailer and the cab of this truck, and it's he so heavy. Uh, then it comes with a silhouette, Nissan, which I think is like identical. I'm going to say it's probably a very, no it's not, never mind. This is a Nissan GT. 35 GTRR version 2. Man, for a second I thought these were the same car. They are not. They're in the same livery. But they are not the same car. So that's really cool. One of them's a GTR and one of them's a Sylvia. So we're going to go ahead and uh, open up both of those, obviously. We're going to open up that. So I found this. I did not find the rest of the set. So I don't have the Pantera yet or the Mazda RX-3. I'll have to try to snag those. But this likely was going to be the hardest one to get anyway. Somebody stashed it, and I found it, so I, I bought it. So, sorry about that, whoever stashed that. <clears throat> you snooze, you lose. Um, and then uh, we've got the latest premium Hot Wheels Premium 2-pack releases. We've got this uh, Toyota Land Cruiser and Mercedes-Benz Sprinter Tourer. Uh, do they have, like, a title for these 2-packs? Whatever, these are, like, 
off-road overlanding kind of whatever kind of thing we'll call it so we got those and then the uh, rally car style stuff uh, both Cosworths the 87 and the 93 one in the shell livery and one uh, in this uh, Ford livery thing uh the four livery one what was that originally in was that originally in a boulevard set i think it might have been and then that was the one that was like really easy to find for some reason so we got that one again and then we've got this one this is the one that's getting bought up it's like the jdm set we got a mazda rx7 pandem and a mazda miata so this is mazda and we've already got this car in car culture. And the other one is new. Um, this one, I believe, yeah, both of these vehicles, I think, are new. I don't think we got those, uh, that livery of either of those in any of the, the previous releases. So sometimes they do that. Sometimes there'll be, there won't be one that's in any previous release. But the most of those two packs, one of the cars has been previously released or at least very close to it has been previously released so there's those um then uh the rest of this is from my buddy jay he gave me some mainline cars we've got a couple of zamax a mclaren solus gt and a 57 jeep fc in zamac so we'll check those out and then we've got a couple of E-case cars, the Shelby Daytona Coupe in Golf, and then the custom 72 Chevy Love LUV in green. And then he found me the Mazda Repu from the uh, latest set of Ultra Hots. So I am just missing now from this particular set, the Volkswagen Kafer Racer. That's the last one I need. If I can find that, then I got the full latest set. And I'll be done with that. Um, I'm still missing. I got to get the Porsche from the like the previous set. I still don't have that. Um, I think my buddy Brian has one aside for me. So I, I got to get that from him at some point. I think he found one with a broken blister or something. Um, and then from Jay, he sent me some weird stuff as usual. We got the University of North Carolina team collectible Tar Heels matchbox in a box weird stuff right odd stuff and then we've got this pretty cool 143rd scale i believe it's 143rd corvette Le Mans, 1972 this thing is pretty awesome looking very very cool and uh, i've already got one of these corvettes that he sent me from before where is it it's like over there somewhere it's a very similar one so this is going to be you know, very similar to that one. If you've seen that one in my previous episode, uh, not the latest previous episode, but a while ago, but, uh, yeah, this is pretty neat. This one is sealed up. It's still taped what appears to be the original tape holding it together. And we're going to open it and we're going to pop it off the base, check it out. And that's going to be uh, a nifty thing as well. So that's what I've got to show you today. We got Kyosho. That's the thing I'm probably most excited about. We'll put together some sort of thumbnail here. These seem to be the popular ones, so we'll go like this. That should be pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and flip the camera around. Let's check this stuff close up. Keep her tuned. All right, let's start this second segment just by uh, taking a quick look at this... Uh, Super Treasure Hunt Camaro right here that I picked up at the monthly meet. The guy had it for sale for a 10. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to scoop this. Why not? Uh, other people had carded versions of this and they wanted way too much money for it. This guy had a loose one for cheap. And I was like, I just pounced on it. I'm like, you know what? I'll, I'll grab this car. I didn't really need it, but... Or really want it all that bad, but I ended up scooping it up anyway. Uh, that's a pretty cool little super treasure hunt, I think. It's in the Art Car series. I'm not even recalling what uh, year it's a, it is, or what I know what year it is right now. I'm saying I'm not recalling what year this super came out, but maybe it was last year, maybe it was year the year before. I lose track. Uh, but a pretty cool little Copo Camaro. 
liking that. That's a cool super. I dig it. All right, we'll go ahead and set the, those two guys back there. Um, let's look at, uh, before we really get into, like, Hot Wheels, because, like, Hot Wheels is going to be the majority of this episode. Mostly Hot Wheels Premium. Let's take a look at this weird uh, matchbox. North Carolina. University of North Carolina Team Collectible Matchbox. That's kind of interesting. It says, for a complete listing of all college and professional team collectibles available, write directly to White Rose Collectibles. You got to write in to find it. Can't even look her up online. No, you probably could. But, uh, yeah, just a different time then. Um, what is the date? 1991. Um, I guess we're going to open this. I don't know if I should, really, but I'm sure they're not that rare. Um, I've got a couple versions of this casting. But there it is. North Carolina, 1992. North Carolina University. Uh, University of North Carolina. Um, yeah, there that is. The Tar Heels. It's an interesting piece of matchbox, I guess. Kind of nifty. How do you guys like this close camera angle today? We're going to just be close up the entire time. Going to get a little distortion on the vehicles getting up this close with a wide angle, but I think it looks kind of cool. Gotta love the uh, the iPhone wide angle lens. Pretty good look. I actually got a lot of depth of field out of it, too. It's pretty nice. All right, there's that. We're going to go with that. And then uh, the next thing we'll look at is uh, Kyosho, starting with the Alpha Romeo uh, Tipo 33 Stradale. If you're not familiar with Kyosho, normally they come in an outer box and then they're in this like blister pack thing that's almost like reclosable. All of them had that, did not have the outer box. So no outer box, but that's okay. One screw in the base. And then this used to be, Kyosho used to be really honestly like your best choice for any premium die cast. Like before we had, before we were spoiled with brands like Inno 64 and Tarmac Works and Mini GT and, um, you know, Tomica Limited Vintage was around, but they weren't really making like a lot of desirable cars for us collectors anyway before they started doing ferraris and stuff like that there was like kyosho kyosho was the brand to try to hunt down and find if you really wanted something premium and you wanted you know a lot of european car like european cars were really you know detailed and you know detailed versions of those cars you had to go with kyosho and they were kind of hard to find they still are and as time goes on they are still expensive. They're about the same price, but they, they can be quite pricey. Uh, I don't even remember what I paid for these, but they were reasonably priced uh, from Diecast Talk. He had a very limited quantity of cars, and uh, I got on there as fast as I could and scooped up four vehicles that were kind of left over that I really wanted uh, for the price that he was asking. So, pretty nice. Uh, these are... All going to be basic kind of black interiors, um, plastic base, metal body, and rubber tires. And they typically roll pretty decent. Um, this one does. but uh, And that's pretty much modus operandi for uh, Kyosho. Usually they roll pretty good. Hey, look, you can see my reflection in the back. Uh, every day we try a new way to film this that's kind of part of the fun all right uh, next is this launcher fulvia fulvia i don't even know this one came with a card so you can see that it was available in three different colors originally we got the silver one which out of these three uh the silver one probably the my first pick actually uh, that Elf, that Stradale Alfa Romeo red is definitely the color for that. I bet you it was also available in yellow and maybe silver. 
as well. Usually, uh, Kyosho cars are available in three different colors in one release. We'll go ahead and unscrew it from the base. And take a peek. So, as usual with Kyosho, uh, very detailed. Again, metal body, plastic base, basic black interior, but very detailed otherwise. And it is... Uh, it's a roller. I forgot to set this guy back there. So definitely a roller. Now oh, this poster board looks like hairy almost at this angle, which is kind of ugly. I need to get a smooth acrylic plastic, white plastic. That's what we need uh, for these videos. I need to get some sheet of plexi. Work on that. I'll work on that for sure. But yeah, anyway, quite detailed, very detailed, uh, very nice looking, and uh, you get inserted details for headlights, taillights, all that good stuff. Rubber tires with tread, and it rolls, and it's a pretty uh, sweet little car. Pretty nice. And I think they're also pretty much true 164 scale, or very close anyway. Uh, but... Yeah, all right, so detailed nonetheless. Here is a Ferrari Dino 308 GT4. We'll unscrew the base, set that one down. Um, I will say that not all Kyoshos are created equal to, and case in point with that is if you do happen to find like early release Ferraris from the first like two releases of Kyosho Mini Car, they're really not good. This one is um, probably a little bit later release. But you just got to look out for that. Um, this one, there's a little bit of a stance issue with it. It's crooked. And that's not a huge problem though, because these... Actually, Kyosho, when you get Ferraris, they did not come together. You had to put them together. So really, if these are not together right, it is a failure on a part of the person that put it together. I'm just taking a look here, making sure this is all straight up and down here. Looking pretty good. Uh, the interior piece does pop off. The wheels also pop out. We don't need to do that right now. I just wanted to get the stance straightened on this one. Which we'll start with the front of the car. Let's see if we can fix it. If we can't fix it today on camera, I will fix it on my own time. And yeah, it might take a little bit more finagling, but I can already see it's a little better. Come on, screw. And that did not fix it at all. It's still crooked. All right, well, I will. Oh, there it is. It just snapped into place. No, still crooked. All right, I'll have to figure that out. I'll figure that out off camera, but I should be able to straighten this thing out. But there you go. It's a pretty cool looking car. Looks just like a, kind of like a boat. It's got a boat look to it. All right, and then uh, this one. This one's really cool. This is the BMW M1. Uh, funny story is, is I ordered this. So this was ordered, uh, this was uh, white, red, or silver. I actually ordered this from eBay a long, long time ago, ordered a silver one, and then it never showed up. I got it, was getting it shipped from Japan, cheap shipping, it was during when COVID was starting, and uh, it never ended up making it to me. They kind of like shut down the post office for EMS, uh, screwed a lot of things up, obviously. Um, and this car just never made it to me. And now I finally have a version of this casting. And it's the white one, which is actually really cool. So definitely digging it. What a cool looking wedge shaped uh, BMW. Coolest looking BMW in my book, as far as I'm concerned. Is this BMW M1? And it rolls. 
Got little BMW logos on the back there. Got the side mirrors, pretty detailed. The wheels look cool. Um, this one is a riveted construction. A lot of Kioshas were riveted and not screwed together. But the Ferraris were screwed together because you actually had to put them together. But what a cool car. I don't think anybody has ever really put this out in detailed die cast, like detailed 164 die cast, but Kyosho. I think they're the only ones that have done it. Uh, if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments and I want to pick up a different brand of it. But there you go. Pretty nifty to have that. That is a sweet little car. So definitely digging on that. All right. So uh, before we go on to Hot Wheels, we got one more kind of oddball thing. And it's this 143rd scale vehicle, uh, which we have to peel tape off. I'm just going to peel it straight off. So there's that. This is uh, Vitesse. Vet Vetesse? I don't know. Stuff I cannot pronounce. It's limited edition in vit Vitesse, Vitesse, 143rd scale. Pretty nifty, huh? Uh, comes in kind of a cool shaped square package. One screw in the bottom holding it to the base. And it's heavy. It's actually quite heavy. Let's set this back here. Uh, this is, you got to be careful with these because the graphics on here are actually decals and they're not like clear coated over so they can get crispy over time and start to fall off, which I realized with the last one of these that I had, it is a metal base metal body and it has got a very substantial weight to it. Uh, the tires are rubber, but overall, I mean, this thing is really cool. And it rolls. Very, very detailed. Just extremely detailed. And it looks really good. Really quite fantastic, actually. That's pretty awesome. It actually looks better than the last one I got. The last one had some peeling decals and stuff. Still very, very cool. But this one is a little bit cooler because a little bit more complete. Just because it doesn't have cracking... Uh, decals, but that could happen at any time. This thing is, you know, it's just straight up like modeler decals, and they're not clear coated over, so that's what uh, that's what can happen. They dry out, they start to crack, and uh, you lose them. They start peeling off of the car, uh, so that just can happen. Unfortunately, you can see like either some dirt or something got underneath that one. You can see that. And I just pulled this out. It was definitely sealed. So, all right. I don't know. Let me go ahead and set her back there. That thing is pretty nifty. All right. Moving on. So now it's time to jump into Hot Wheels. And let's start with the two packs. We've got this uh, Mazda two pack. both the cars out. So we got a MX-5 Miata. And lots of packaging here to navigate through. Um, in like a metal flake black, it looks okay. It's got like a, a copper colored wheels or and like a little red accent back there on the interior. That's cool. Other than that, pretty basic little Miata. I mean, it's it's good looking. I guess it's it did a good job of it. Dot matrix style printing. You guys know I complain about it all the time. This guy we've definitely seen before. She's a repeat, and uh, that's just kind of too bad. I wish they wouldn't do it. To be honest, I mean, I'm I get it. Like for some people, it might be nice. Like you missed out on this car the first time. It's like, oh, I can get the car now a second time in a two pack, but. I don't think a lot of people collect that way. They Most people collect don't collect loose anyway. They collect them carded. So they're really just trying to get a complete set of releases. So I think for them, the value is really not there at getting a, another one of them. Or, you know, like a, another chance at getting that particular car in that particular livery. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. All right. The uh, 05 Toyota Land Cruiser and Mercedes-Benz Sprinter Tour. Go ahead and open up that. 
navigating packaging. There's your there's your vehicles, the Land Cruiser and the Tourer. Tourer. That's pretty cool. Rubber tires. This thing looks pretty awesome. Hard alloys, black rhino. Yep. Not a rubber spare. It's actually, well, maybe it is actually. It's like a separate piece. Is that rubber? No, it's not. I don't know. It's plastic, I think. This is metal. It's not part of the base. I thought at first it would be part of the base. And it isn't. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, pretty nice. You got that. And then you've got this. The Sprinter. Van. Looks alright. I like the, the kind of black rhino whatever. This livery on it with the, the evergreen trees looks very inviting and cool. This thing's so skinny for like how these look in real life. They are kind of skinny in real life, but not like this skinny. I mean, this thing looks like it could tip over quite easy. You know what I mean? But kind of weird. I guess it looks all right. All right, so you got that guy, you got that guy, and then you got this, the rally set, Kazi. Cool cars, definitely. Somehow not desirable amongst collectors, which is just wild to me. Because this is the one you're going to see warming the pegs. Oddly to me. Oddly to me. Maybe it makes sense to you. But this is definitely one. People will buy. More people will buy this. That two-pack. And definitely more people will buy that than this. And that's just kind of sad to me. Because I'd really rather have this. This is my favorite of the three sets. And you get the Cosworths. One in shell livery. Looking pretty good. Looking pretty awesome. Very, very cool. And then you get this one. Little rally car. Team Ford. Check that out. course metal on metal they both roll all that jazz it's hot wheels hot wheels premium and then you get dot matrix printing which sucks but you know it is what it is i guess at this point definitely so far my favorite car of the, the night um all right moving on from that let's go uh let's open this speaking of big packaging heavy die cast let's do this thing right here uh, this Liberty Walk Team Transport. We got the LB Silhouette GT Nissan 35 GT RR version 2. Huh. And the Flip Sider Hauler. I don't know if I've had the Flip Sider Hauler yet. I think this is the first for me. It's heavy. So heavy. Like, really heavy. So I'm going to pull the car out here. And there's probably a piece of plastic stuck in here. There is. There's your trailer. Here's your truck. Here's your car. And let's take a look. All right. So the trailer. Yeah. So the base is metal. And that's what's given this its weight. It's actually pretty light on its own. The truck is metal on metal. So it's pretty robust. And then the trailer goes in here. And does it lock in? It does. It kind of snaps in. That's pretty cool. And then the wheels are hidden underneath there. They're little tiny. And actually, they're rubber, too. Which is kind of cool. So, so this opens. This is your flip siding truck. And then the gate also goes down so you can drive your car up and go to a show 
like the auto salon or something and you can show off your car right like that without even opening up the trailer and letting it out of there so that's pretty neat pretty cool lb racing so very cool the only thing that isn't cool is the fact that snap that together drive this out of the way these graphics look terrible i mean look at the dot matrix on that it is just so bad i wish they would do something about it i really do i mean it's such a cool car it's cool cool thing they got going on Hot Wheels doing a pretty good job with their uh, releases, all that stuff. They just can't. The graphics. What's going on? Mainline graphics look better than uh, car premium graphics, which doesn't make a lick of sense to me. Oh, well. Let's move on. Uh, let's, let's knock out this guy. The other 23. Liberty Walk. The Nissan Silvia S15 one in Boulevard. <clears throat> Cooler car. Definitely. Check that guy out. We saw this. We've had this in a main line so far, but not in premium. And now we get it in premium. And the graphics are bad. As we now can expect. I think this is a much cooler looking car than the, the R35. I mean, the R35 is cool, but this doesn't look as cool as the Silvio. To me, this is way cooler. What do you guys think? <clears throat> you think I'm right. <clears throat> but as a trio, I mean, with this truck, the cars, uh, it's pretty cool. I'm surprised they didn't release a diorama yet. Or like a premium, yeah, one of those premium sets. A Liberty Walk one. It's probably coming. It'll come eventually. All right. Uh, let's see. Next, uh, let's do the MBK van. That guy right there. In ad van livery. Right there. And again, I mean, the graphics are terrible. They just are. I mean, look at that texture in there. Just should not be. This is actually my first time getting this this uh, casting, the MBK van. I uh, believe this is a just a unlicensed model, and it is kind of cool. It's all right. Cool to get it in Boulevard. Yeah, it's all right. Kind of a neat thing. What do you guys think about that casting? I don't mind it, uh, but I do like a lot better. This Porsche 718 Cayman in blue right here. That's pretty slick. So check this bad boy out. A little orange peel in the paint, but not enough uh, graphics on here to really get mad about anything. So that's good. The wheel sticks out a little bit there. It's a little weird. The axle's a little bit long. Um, but looks pretty good. Looks Blue's a good color for this car, for sure. Looks really awesome. All right. Uh, and then the Nissan Skyline RS KDR30. <clears throat> Open up that. This is the other one that's going to get really scarfed up. Boulevard gets scarfed up no matter what. But uh, in particular, you know... Obviously, this one's not getting left behind by anyone on the pegs, and neither is this. This won't either. This is actually a really good version of this car. It looks quite fantastic. I like this Skyline. I dig it. I like the older Skylines, actually. I love that, like, boxy look of these cars. Not a curve in sight, except for the tires. And I like that. I mean, there's a little bit, but mostly angly, angular design, straight lines, that style of car. 
is pretty cool to me. So I like this one. This actually might be the highlight of the set now that I've opened it. <clears throat> and then lastly, the Chevy Corvair Yanko. Cool casting. Not not really super into it in this particular like kind of golf livery, I guess. It's got golf. It's supposed to have golf in the headlights, which, yeah, good luck. If you were blind, like partially legally blind, uh, the real car would probably look like this to you. Um, it's bad. But yeah, in golf, cool casting, bad livery, are not one of my favorites, I should just say. Um, and of course, with the uh, dot matrix graphics in full effect, it's uh, not really winning me over. So honestly, the both of these could kind of care less about. Uh, if the graphics were sharp on this Advan one, I probably would like it a lot more. Uh, this one really doesn't do anything for me. I like the car. I just don't really... The uh, delivery does nothing. Um, this thing looks really nice. This looks really nice. This looks pretty good. Uh, just, you know, that terrible resolution graphics kind of ruin it a little bit. All right. <clears throat> Enough complaining. Let's go ahead and move on to mainline and then get out of here. We've got the custom 72 Chevy LUV. Hot Wheels E case. Real basic. Real cool. Let's save the car. Sharp graphics. They're tampos. They're pad printed or whatever they are, but they uh they do a better job. I don't care if there's less colors, less surfaces. They look better. We got that. Uh, we got a golf livery Shelby Cobra Daytona Coupe. Right there. Ugly casting. Cool looking golf car though. Um, the casting is just so big and bulbous. This real car, if it was in 164 scale, would be tiny. Nowhere near this big in 164. This is like one almost, you know, 148 something scale. 150. I don't know. It's bigger, is what I'm saying. Not great. Uh, tampos are sharp, though. Graphics are pretty sharp. So, I will give it that. And then, uh, we got some Xanax. We got the McLaren Soulless. I like calling it the Soul less because I don't like the look of this car, but it's cool to get it in Zamac. And that's kind of a neat like livery for it or graphic for it. Kind of cool. I mean, it does look pretty cool in this. Uh, it looks nice and futuristic just being in Zamac. That is kind of neat, I guess. So I guess that one's all right. <clears throat> Not bad. Thank you, Jay, for that. I like getting Zamax anyway. I love Zamax. And then uh, the 57 Jeep FC. Zemek with a green window. Looks all right. Casting's kind of interesting. I showed this casting in the last Diecast Weekly episode. We checked it out a little bit. And it's kind of neat. Not too bad. And then lastly, we've got the Ultra Hots. One of the last Ultra Hots I need. I love and adore this set from Hot Wheels. It is a Target exclusive thing, at least in the U.S. it is. I love the Ultra Hots livery stuff. I love the Ultra Hots wheels. I think this is a really cool retro set. They are full deco. Or at least they're tampoed on all sides. And the tampos are sharp because they're tampos. They're not a, uh, you know, they're not printed on your uh, home Kodak printer from, you know, 1997 or whatever. Bubble jet, ink jet. And uh, it looks pretty good. Pretty sweet. And that's going to be it for this episode. So we got... Quite a few cars out today. I think uh, definitely my favorite. I would say definitely, without a doubt. My favorite is this one right here. Definitely digging that car. The car is pretty awesome. I'm, re I'm really glad to get it in 164 scale. Uh, that's a fantastic thing to get. Um, the 143rd scale 
that though is pretty neat too. That's kind of undeniably cool as well. But you guys let me know what your favorite was in the episode down below. And uh, thank you guys for watching another one. Uh, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you in the next one.